Reconfigure or not reconfigure? That's the question for Texas Motor Speedway. Maybe we jumped the gun a little bit. Maybe Texas Motor Speedway isn't broken. Yeah, last year during the playoff race here in the fall, a number of drivers said the best solution to fix the racing at Texas would be to bulldoze it. And you could bulldoze it, turn it into the world's largest Texas roadhouse, which wasn't actually started in Texas. It was started in Louisville, Kentucky. Figure that out. There is a Texas roadhouse right next to the racetrack, though, so they could just expand it. Think about like a Bucky's Texas roadhouse crossover that could just take the place of Texas Motor Speedway. Probably would be more entertaining at times. However... Maybe Texas isn't broken, right? The last couple of races at Texas Motor Speedway have been unpredictable, to say the least. They've essentially become drafting tracks, plate races, but without the plate racing aspect of it. There were 16 cautions, sorry, 14 natural cautions on Sunday this past weekend at Texas Motor Speedway. And 14 of those cautions were all for incidents, something we typically never see anymore, especially not at short tracks. So maybe Texas isn't broken. Of course, when they repaved and reconfigured the racetrack back in 2017, they widened turns one and two, and they lowered the banking there. Eddie Gossage, then track president, had this crazy like fan fiction prediction that you know they'd be going five wide off into the corner at Texas. That was never going to happen. I don't necessarily know what he was dreaming of. Drugs are illegal in Texas, so he couldn't have been on that. Regardless, they were just never going to get that, and it ruined the racing. And then once they realize that the repave, of course, doesn't really produce good racing, and that's not necessarily the track's fault. Repaves just never produce good racing until they've weathered in. They decided to go ahead and douse the entire second, third, fourth lane of that racetrack with PJ1. Like they were a child trying to pour water into a glass and then it overflows. And they're like, look at the mess I made. And the parents are like, it's so cute. It's not. You have to clean it up now. And it's ruined. Same thing that happened to the racetrack right here. It ruined the racetrack. And IndyCar was basically just a one-lane race on the bottom. However, it did start to get better. And now the cup race has essentially, and NASCAR races in general, have essentially been one lane on the bottom. Until the last couple of years. When the lane has started to move up, you still can't run up up the racetrack at all in turns one and two without getting into that PJ1 that exists there. And then you just are like, well, I'm along for the ride. I'm going to hit the wall now. And then you hit the wall, and that is basically the end of your day, more likely than not. But drivers want a challenging racetrack, right? We constantly hear about how drivers love a track like Darlington or Homestead, where you're constantly sort of on the edge, have to race the racetrack type of situation. Texas is the exact same thing, just without the wall right there when you're running next to it. Yeah, if you make a mistake, it, you're going to eventually hit the wall. There's just a long time to get there. It really give you some time to think about it. You know, try to rationalize with yourself that this isn't going to hurt that bad. This is okay. We'll be able to rebound from this. You won't. Not in the next-gen car. You'll still probably be broken for the day. However, maybe the race, like I said, just isn't that bad. And at this point, if you're going to reconfigure it, what are you going to do? So obviously everybody talks about our options. Oh, well, you can just turn it into another Atlanta. No, please, God, no, not another Atlanta. Not unless they take one of the Atlanta dates and give it to Texas and then take another SMI date and give it to like North Wilkesboro for a points paying date. That way it's basically uh, a net wash. You're not gaining a super speedway race. You're not losing a super speedway race. We still maintain six. We don't need to go to seven drafting track races, super speedway plate races, whatever you want to call them. I'll continue to call them plate races until the end of time. Don't do that. Please don't do that. However, if they did do that, it would actually probably be better to do it at Texas than it would be at Atlanta because Texas is not going to age the same way that Atlanta is going to age. And if that's really what you want to do, you want to turn it into a super speedway race, you should have paved it with the asphalt that you used at Charlotte, which is rubber polymer infused asphalt. And Charlotte still looks brand new. Like it looks like it had, it was repaved nearly 20 years ago. You would not be able to tell me if you just asked somebody, oh, when's the last time that got repaved? They would not guess 20 years ago. If you did that at Texas and you wanted to keep a super speedway race, that makes all the sense in the world. Atlanta is going to wear out. And once it does, it'll be really interesting to see sort of what they do with the package there or if they just repave it again. So that remains to be seen. Don't do that at Texas. Do not do an Atlanta style reconfiguration and repave. If you're going to reconfigure it at this point, just take it back to the way it was. Right, Make it symmetrical with turns three and four. Get rid of that bump that's down there in three and four, which certainly didn't help the uh, racing in terms of guys not crashing a lot of crashes happen do that if you're going to reconfigure it just do that narrow the racetrack back up put the banking back up and then repave that end of the racetrack and let it go it would be really interesting to have that end of the racetrack be repaved versus the other end still existing how it currently does 
but that would certainly open up that in in future years as you know the pavement starts to wear and use the pavement that you used at atlanta which has started to age very quickly and weather rather quickly do that i've seen a lot of people be like oh just bulldoze it turn it into a short track something like that jordan bianchi mentioned on his podcast this week that you know maybe they should do like a three-quarter mile a, you know short track absolutely not do not do that we just we all complain about how bad the racing is at richmond why would you want to do that NASCAR, especially back in the late 2000s, early 2000s, had this huge obsession with like wanting to build short tracks, and they never did, thankfully. But every time somebody talked about building a short track, they're like, oh, we should build it just like Richmond. No, don't build it like Richmond. Richmond produces terrible racing. If you're going to build a short track, build it like Bristol. Build it like, not Martinsville, <laughs> but maybe just Bristol. <laughs> because Richmond doesn't produce very good racing at all. Great strategy racing, don't get me wrong, um, but it certainly hasn't been the bare standard of good racing uh, over the last decade for the most part. So don't do that. If you want to do what Texas loves to do, where they talk about, oh, everything's bigger in Texas, that type of nonsense, make a three mile super speedway. You have your stupid big Haas screen. Move, well, if you move <laughs> that big Haas screen to the backstretch, you'd have to make it an even bigger screen, uh, assuming that it works. Lighting a three mile track, they can't light a 1.44 mile track currently. It is 1.44 miles as much as Texas doesn't want to admit that. It's the biggest, smallest mile and a half intermediate that we have, or something like that. Make it a make it a big super speedway. SMI currently does not have a super a true super speedway track in their portfolio. Texas loves to pride itself on everything being bigger in Texas. Well, it's not necessarily a good thing, but they love to talk about it. So do that. Build it bigger. Make a huge super speedway out there. And obviously, they're probably constrained a little bit by their neighbors and whatnot. But at the end of the day, do something different. If you're going to reconfigure and not just take it back the way it was, you have to do something different. Don't do it in Atlanta. We've already seen it. We don't need more of that, right? We started off with Daytona. We went to Atlanta. Now we're hitting Talladega all within the first 10 races of the season. I mean, 33%, eh, more like 28%, whatever. No, I'm not doing all the math right now. <laughs> the season has been on drafting tracks already this year. We don't necessarily need that. Yeah, Atlanta had one good finish so far since its reconfiguration. But the rest of the racing just hasn't been that good. Like, it's been okay. Not the best, not the worst, but certainly not the greatest race ever, as some people were touting it just a couple months ago. So with Texas, maybe just leave it the way it was. Turn the bulldozers around, lock your arms out front like a Sierra Club when they're coming to knock down a forest, and make sure they don't tear this track up, potentially. I don't necessarily... The solution is to go back the way it was. But also, the way it was before, raced fine. It was okay. It certainly wasn't a race where, like, I don't think people were necessarily super pumped to look forward to. However, with the Gen 7 car maybe old texas probably would race really well compared to how it used to race so that certainly is like something to consider here because right now the coke 600 at charlotte is a phenomenal race and texas is essentially its sister track it's certainly shaped just a little bit different and you know has different banking coming out of the corners and everything like that but it's similar enough that it should continue to produce racing that's very similar so maybe go back to that either way don't turn it into an Atlanta. Don't turn it into a three-quarter mile short track. We certainly don't need another one of those on the schedule. But maybe just go back to the way it was or leave it how it is. Because right now how it is, it's a wild card. And like Denny said on his podcast, like you just have to send it. And that's what he tried to do. And he knew if he sent it and didn't work, he was going to crash. And obviously he ended up crashing. But it creates daring moves. I don't necessarily love the fact that it's just caution after caution after caution after caution. But... It is entertaining, not good racing. That's the difference here. A race can be entertaining, but not good. And I would argue that yesterday or Sunday's race was entertaining, but not necessarily good. That's why I gave it like a 78. At the end of the day, though, if you go back and try to fix it to how it was, I think that's the best solution. Outside of that, if you're not going to do that, if you're not going to put it back to the way it was, then don't do anything. Let it continue to exist how it is. Because eventually, right, that PJ1 certainly has to really go away. Or... Or we get really crazy here and we do what they did at Charlotte in 2005 when Bruton Smith was like, we're going to levigate this track, he and Humpy Wheeler, which is essentially just grinding the track surface down to try to, you know, get rid of a lot of the bad bumps and everything like that. And then just absolute chaos ensued. The track already does produce a lot of chaos at Texas, but maybe that's a solution. You at least can get rid of the PJ1. It would eat tires more than likely. So there's that. 
So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Should Texas Motor Speedway reconfigure? What should they do? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.